Let's start by talking about what is HGH. Human growth hormone is a hormone that's produced naturally by the pituitary gland, especially when we're younger, we're producing a lot of it, but as we age, that production starts to decline. As you've seen, the signs of aging, such as harder to burn fat, harder to recover from exercise, harder to build muscle, your mood changes, your energy levels go down. Maybe when you were younger, you could bounce off walls and play sports and you never got sore. Well, that was partially because of the HGH production. And now, wake up, get out of bed, and you've got aches and pains. And so we're gonna talk over the next series of videos about some things that you can do to increase your production of HGH. So what can we do about our HGH levels? There are some peptides called growth hormone peptides, also known as secretagogues, growth hormone releasing hormones, there's a lot of different names and there's different combinations of these products that can go together to, uh, to give you a boost to what's called your endogenous production of human growth hormone. That's your internal production of human growth hormone. So we're gonna talk over a, a couple of videos upcoming about different options that you can use to improve your natural production of human growth hormone and what some of the benefits are. What are the benefits of increasing your human growth hormone levels? Well, the, think back to when you were younger. You were able to recover from exercise faster. You didn't get the aches and pains from playing sports or, uh, or going to the gym. Uh, you can build muscle easier. You can burn fat easier. Your immune system is stronger and can help prevent some chronic degenerative diseases. If you think about it, it's like turning back the clock and helping you feel younger again. So if you have any questions, check out the list of benefits that we have below and call us if you want to know more about your specific case. So what's the difference between exogenous HGH and growth hormone peptides which help you create your own internal production? The first one is the price, and this is probably the least important, but uh, to a lot of people, this does matter. Um, exogenous HGH, the synthetic form that you put into your body to replace what you have, is very expensive. Your, uh, when you're promoting your own internal production, the peptides run about a third of that price. Number two, when you're putting an exogenous form of a hormone, oftentimes your body's going to become dependent on that hormone. And if you think about something like growth hormone, if your body becomes dependent to that synthetic version and you come off, you basically aged yourself uh, very quickly. And, and that's a really bad thing and can mean a higher rate of mortality in the long run. Now, third is the when your body's uh, stimulating the endogenous production, the internal, your pituitary gland knows where to send that growth hormone. So the, the good news is it's not going to send it to things like organs, like your heart. And an exogenous version, the external version, doesn't have that, that something directing traffic for it. So you have to be careful. You can end up with some additional medical issues that you weren't counting on. So make sure that you choose wisely when it comes to endogenous production versus exogenous hormones, the synthetic HGH or the peptides. Who should not use growth hormone peptides? The number one thing we see is uh, people who are overweight are having blood sugar issues because the uh, growth hormone peptides and HGH can actually create a bit of an insulin resistance if you're having blood sugar uh, issues already. Also, uh, people talk about increased prolactin. That tends to be with the growth hormone releasing peptides, but something like a growth hormone releasing hormone like ipamorelin uh, doesn't tend to have those issues. So you should uh, lean towards the ipamorelin if, if that's a, uh, a problem for you. You also wanna make sure that uh, you pay attention when you have tendon issues because uh, a peptide like this could inc uh, increase your joint pain. So be careful on those. And last but not least, is if you currently have uh, some type of cancer, this is not a good idea because uh, even though the uh, it, the myths of the peptides causing cancer has been debunked by the uh, anti-aging societies, uh, we still don't want to be taking it if you currently have some type of active cancer. So these are the types of people who should not be taking the growth hormone releasing peptides. So a lot of people ask how long they should be on growth hormone peptides. And the good news is your body's not dependent on the peptide. So you don't really have an end point that you need to come off and cycle like you do if you're doing steroids or, or something of that nature. But um, 
I always recommend to our clients to stay on it for a minimum of 90 days. The reality is most people are going to start seeing some benefits in the first couple weeks, but if you really want aesthetic benefits, you're gonna notice those probably at the three to four week mark. So it's important to stay on it for at least another 60 days if you wanna maximize your results. So let us know if you have any specific questions to that, but that's how you'll get the best results. All right, let's talk about some specific peptides. You may have heard of Samorlin, and one of the ways that we like to make sure that the Samorlin is very effective is to add two additional peptides called GHRP2 and GHRP6. This is a tri-blend, some people call it Samorlin Forte because the three peptides work together to amplify the benefits. Now, this can be a great peptide combination if you want to see body composition changes, uh, but I do warn you, some people notice that they become more hungry because of this, uh, because the GHRPs are derivatives of a hunger hormone called ghrelin. So just make sure this is something that you can deal with. If you're exercising a lot and you need to get those excess calories, this could be the perfect peptide for you and it's very affordable. Let's talk about another peptide that I love called ipamorelin or ipamorelin, sometimes people will call it. What I like about this is as opposed to the GHRPs, the IPA does not stimulate your hunger. And so a lot of people can use this when they're really focused on losing weight. Um, one of the other things that I love about it is that it can help improve your sleep patterns. A lot of us are struggling with sleep, especially if you're stressed and have a lot of things going on in your life. So this can help you get deeper sleep and feel more recovered. So that improves your results from exercise. And also, IPA can be taken for long periods of time without any sort of drop off in the efficacy as well. Some of you who are worried about your prolactin levels or cortisol spikes as a result of any types of peptides, this does not happen with the IPA. So uh, definitely look into this option. It's one of our most popular and it might just be right for you. So you may have watched our video about ipamorelin. One of the other most popular formulations for us is the ipamorelin plus CJC. Now, the CJC is going to amplify the ipamorelin. So if you're looking for even stronger and longer pulses of growth hormone, this could be the uh, formulation for you. I like the fact that you can take it for long periods of time. The results get you the same as the IPA, it's just stronger. So look into this one. Uh, I don't think that the, the dosing needs to be any higher than what we provide you because the research, the literature says that um, there's been studies of titrating up higher and higher doses and the reality is the results were the same whether you were taking the dose we provide or even higher doses. So don't think that you need to overstimulate your pituitary gland because you might end up with different problems. Stick to the ones the pharmacies recommend and you'll get the best results. So some people ask about the difference of the growth hormone and the IGF, the exogenous IGF-1. Yes, growth hormone does improve your levels of IGF-1, but when you put an external, uh, an exogenous form of IGF-1, you are putting yourself at higher risk for cancer. So we don't like to use the, ex uh, the exogenous IGF-1 for those situations uh, because of that extra risk factor. So just be careful. I do know a lot of people who've had success, had no issues, but I always wanna put out there the information for you guys to make the best decision for yourself. Let's talk about the timing of when you should take growth hormone peptides. Now, I personally like taking them in the evenings right before bed on an empty stomach. Uh, the reason is because they can improve your sleep patterns, I find it's the perfect time for me to get that extra added benefit of sleeping deeper and waking up really recovered. When you sleep is when you're building muscle, when you're burning fat, and uh, I just love waking up refreshed and feeling sharp for the whole day. But if you are really focused more on body composition, then you may want to take it in the mornings, again on an empty stomach. It can actually do some great things, especially if you're training in the morning, uh, taking it first thing. The reason we say empty stomach is you don't want to take it around times where your insulin levels could go up because insulin competes in the body for uh, against the endogenous production of growth hormone. So that means especially avoid carbs if you are going to have any food near it. So 
That's the, uh, the points that you need to take into account when you're trying to figure out the right timing for you. So when should you take your growth hormone peptide? I personally like to take it in the evenings right before bed on an empty stomach because it improves my sleep patterns. I wake up rested and when we sleep is a great time for building muscle and burning fat. Now you can also take it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. A lot of people like this because they feel it improves their body composition better in the morning, especially when you're gonna train. Now it's important to take it on an empty stomach though because insulin competes with our endogenous production of growth hormone so make sure you avoid carbs specifically but even large amounts of protein can do that so just be careful try the different options see what works best for you so I often get asked should I take testosterone or should I take growth hormone peptides the reality is they're doing two different things even though the results might be similar think of testosterone if your testosterone is low as a flat tire no matter if you upgraded your engine, you're still gonna be dragging along with a flat tire. So fix any problems first before you do any upgrades. But if, you're, if you've fixed up your testosterone and you're doing well, then the reality is if building muscle and size is your goal, then the combination of the two products is going to make the most sense because peptides will create new cells. Testosterone will help you grow existing cells, so that combination is gonna work great for you if you're looking to get lean muscle mass on your body. 